Hey there. This video is going to show how to set up one of the potentiometer knobs here on a V-Control radio um, to be used as a uh, throttle advance for starting your nitro helicopter, maybe first time of the day or cold weather. And, you know, the V-Control doesn't have trim tabs, so when you normally need to click up trim a little bit to get the, the motor started, we don't have that. Um, Mercado's suggestion is to go into Governor and set your idle setup and just fiddle with this value as you're trying to start it. Um, that's not very convenient. Another idea might be to uh, set your direct throttle mode so that when you have motor run, motor idle, motor on, and you're in bank one, bank one, now you have a direct throttle. Movement. So instead of setting your trim, you just bump it up a little bit to get it started. And I thought that was going to work pretty well. It did for the first couple of gallons on this helicopter. This is the first nitro I've run on the V-Control. Um, so normally what you would have set is you've got, you know, your flight mode one, which is the direct throttle, and then you've got bank your, two, bank three, and your two banks bank one. Um, that pretty much just run your head speeds. And in a perfect world, motor off. You turn your motor off position, and I don't know if you can see in there, but I've already put some tick marks on the carb barrel because I need them for later. That first tick mark there, there's another one right there next to it, is my idle. And then when I hit my uh, throttle cut switch, it uh, closes the barrel completely, and that turns off the engine. Um, so with that all set up properly, you should be able to leave your switch motor on, motor off in the motor off position. Never have to worry about where your throttle stick is because it's disabled, and start your helicopter. Um, this two weekends ago though, it was about 20 degrees cooler than typical, and I was having trouble getting it started. So I thought, why not do what I normally do? You gotta put it into motor run. motor run position. Now you have your live throttle. Only trouble was back to I accidentally didn't remember to put my flight bank switch back to one after I was done flying the last flight. So I hit motor on. I'm in mode two, and because I'm right-handed and all of this mechanical business here is facing away from me when I started the helicopter, I didn't notice. But this thing was slowly advancing to wide open throttle, so you can guess what happened, man. A nice little hot start. Timer, six minutes. So, the fix today is to take care of all that. Really won't need my direct to throttle bank, bank anymore. So I'm going to disable that after all this. So what you will bank be two. able to do is leave it in bank two. Motor off. Motor off. And we're going to set up a macro cells mixer so that the potentiometer knob gives you about a 15 degree or 15 percent throttle right here so it's going to advance your throttle regardless of what flight mode you're in or whether motor off is even on or off and you can turn the knob and it's going to advance your throttle so that on a cold day you can get a little more juice without the risk of a hot start and the real uh, genius of this mix is this knob is not going to give you full throttle it's just going to give you a tiny little bit of range so with all that backstory out of the way, I'm going to put a note below if you want to skip all that and just get to how to do it. We're going to start that right now. So the first thing you need to do is a little bit of math. Um, you need to go into your idle setup and see what is it right now. It's 12 from mine. It would be different for yours, but mine is 12. That's where the engine idles perfectly. So I'm going to write that number down. Then I need to go into my direct flight mode. Motor on. Bank one. And note where I might have to ex advance it on a cold day to get it to run. The absolute most you'd ever have to do. We're not talking about even 50% throttle. We're talking about to get it running on a cold day, or when you're having trouble, what's the most you'd ever have to get it? And for me, it's right about there. So I'm going to make a little mark right on the barrel. We're going to be using those later. So right now, I have a wide open throttle. You can see that wide open throttle is already marked. 
I just put a mark for where is the most advanced I would ever want, like a trim. And then that is my global idle 12 mark right there. And then I also have my throttle kill mark. So those are all important to note where they are. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going into my uh, into my uh, global idle again. And we're going to set a value just so I have a number. Because I just manually advanced that to right there. I know that's about how much juice it takes to get it running when it's a cold day. I need to see what that value actually is. So I'm putting the stick back to low. I go back into global, uh, global idle setup. And I'm going to manually rotate my global idle until I get to that tick mark there. I say that's right about 36. So that right there is 36. So that's another number we're going to write down. 36. What we need to do is set our new global idle halfway between that point. So from 12 to 36, we need to set that as our new global idle because the mix is going to take care of the rest. So that's a total delta of 24. So we need to, half of that is 12. I'll do the math so you can see what I'm doing. And I didn't want to say just double the number because it ends up being 24 for me, but it might not be 24 for everybody. You don't just double your uh, global idle. It's just half of the distance between your current global idle and as much as you might need to advance it on a cold day. So I need to set my new global idle to 24. I can't even begin to explain why these numbers need to be set this way. I just kind of trial and error. This is what you have to do to get it to work. So now all we've done is just changed our global idle. So that's, that's not what we're trying to do. Now, uh, I guess first thing to do is make sure you've got macro cells installed. If you haven't, go to vstabby info and install it on your V control. But next you're going to go into setup and down at the bottom you got macro cell setup. And I've never messed with uh, configuration, but in edit macro cells you're going to scroll out to the very first ESC, which is number 10. So ESC 10 and you're going to scroll over and click it and set it to a mix. And you're going to hear your servo do something. And basically, uh, now nothing controls <laughs> nothing controls your throttle now. you got to set the mix. So the next thing we go to is the input. And the input is going to be the very last thing before you get to the double dots. And it's FCESC. Oh, there it was. FCESC. Now for mix, you might have a positive number, you might have a negative number. That's going to depend on how your uh, throttle servo is set. Mine takes a negative number to close the throttle barrel, which is what we're trying to do. So you're going to increase the number to lower the throttle barrel position. So you can see right now it's just at mid-stick. And I'm going to lower the number, and you'll see the throttle barrel. Oops, we have to click on it. There we go over here so I'm on mix I forgot to do that now I'm going to start rotating in the negative and you're going to see the throttle barrel moving and I'm going to go all the way to that first mark we made that's the most we'll ever want to adjust it right about there so for me that's a negative 71 now for input we're going to put it put it to the knob we want to control, so it's going to be POTI1, which is this knob right here. Um, maybe I didn't note, when you set that first number, you need to be dialed all the way up to maximum value. Um, and the, you're not going to see anything move yet because we haven't completed the mix. It doesn't know the step size, so... The next step is to set your uh, step size, is what the second value is. And for me, since I had a negative number 
in the beginning, and it's going to be a negative number here for the step size. And I found that negative five is pretty good. If the, the higher you num the number you go, that's the more of the throttle that it's going to use. So if you used a really big step size, then your knob is going to end up using the entire throttle travel. But you don't want that. So now you can see that I'm turning from when I'm all the way max, I make that knob. When I turn it all the way down, well, I need to get it so that it goes all the way to that idle number. So that's why I'm going to start fiddling with the mix numbers. You kind of have to just fiddle with it a little bit. So now I'm going up to that first number that was negative 71 before. And when my potentiometer knob is turned all the way down, I'm trying to adjust my top number, which is negative 80 now at this point. I want it to get to that proper idle where I know it idles. That's my old global idle 12 value right there. Then we're going to go back. So now you see it was originally 72. Now it's up to negative 85 to get it so that when I have the potentiometer turned all the way down, I'm at my proper idle position. Now we're going to start messing with the step size so that when I'm turned all the way up, to reach the other position. So now you can see my step size is 13. And so when I turn it all the way down, now well that goes too far. Now I've gone all the way to a throttle shutoff. We don't want that. So what this means is my initial global idle was a little bit too high. What we're aiming for is to get max potentiometer knob there, min potentiometer knob there. They still have a little bit of value, so my step size is too big. But if I reduce the step size, then I don't reach my two valve endpoints. So I need to mess with the global idle again. That's really not bad right there, though. And then that's off. So that's actually pretty close right there. I may just leave that low enough alone. That second knob, I mean second knob, that second pin mark was just sort of a guess. That mark I made right there was just sort of a guess at how much uh, trim I might need to start it if it's cold or it's acting up. So I may be tempted to leave this right here. So now I have all the way off is my proper idle. All the way up gives me a little, of, little bit of advance on trim, but I really want to leave it all the way down most of the time. And then when I kill it, I hit my kill switch, and that turns it off. And if I'm in mode of run, I still have full throttle all the way up to wide open throttle. And all the way down is back to idle. But you can see that even if I'm in bank two, bank two motor off. And I'm in throttle hold and motor off. I can still start the engine because I'm in idle right now and I'm at my idle mark and I can turn up the potentiometer to advance the trim and I can still kill it. So now there's no worry about me leaving the radio in bank two in an idle position because as long as you're in motor off, you can start the engine, but you can still advance the throttle if you need to. So hopefully that helps some of you guys out.